Welcome on sports fans, welcome back to another very special episode. I'm your host Joe Mar. I'm Rush. And this is This or That Sports TV, the place you guys come to get the best, most interesting and riveting sports topics, discussions and debates on the internet. Yes people, but before we get into today's post-match analysis, don't forget to like this video. Leave a comment under the video and subscribe to This or That Sports TV. And share the video to at least 10 people but ensure to get us 6 subscribers because if each one of you guys can do that, you know how many subscribers that will get us by the end of the day. Yes, so Kingston College 4, Mona High School 2. I don't think that scoreline reflects, you know, the, the whole game. Um, let's talk about it, bro. How do you feel about this game? Um, well, you know, you know, we came here, you know, and we, we saw a football game that was controlled by Mona High School, right? Mona absolutely did everything that they wanted to do in the game today, except win the game. You know, Mona had, uh, had complete control over the game. Mona got the balls in the positions that they wanted to get the balls in and they got the opportunities that they, wanted, that they wanted to get. But before we get ahead of it, bro, let's do a quick recap of the game. There we go. So the game kicked off, you know, and, and the Kingston College, you know, getting the odd opportunity, though Mona was in control and managing to come away with two penalties. And of course, Dujan Richards converted effortlessly on well. both. Who else but Dujan Richards? And he would let us score a hat-trick, but we'll get into that uh, later down in the video. You know, after that, you know, Mona continued bombarding them, continued bombarding them. Theodore, I keep on calling Theodore, I'm not sure why. Denzel Washington. McKenzie. He cracked the ball against the, against the crossbar. You know, um, they, they constantly got chances, you know. Kante, that they call him, he, con he constantly got through, he constantly made opportunities. Yeah. And they were knocking on the door, knocking on the door. And I think that that halftime whistle, came as a relief to Kingston College, bro. Kingston College were fighting for the halftime whistle. And we saw Craig Butler, you know, and his assistant coach Taylor, really spoke to the, the guys, trying to incite them, trying to motivate them. One thing I realized with the Mona team at halftime, they did not drop their heads. You know, they were still confident and they were more than assured that they could still come back and win this game. And they came out in the second half with a high intensity. You know, the, per the culprit responsible for, for the two penalties, mm -hmm. Carlton Brown, a defender, he was thrusted up into the forward line in the second, in, at the end of the first half and into the second half. And he was an absolute menace. He was under Bayern's arm, he was giving Darrell Vaz. Why do I keep calling these guys by the early? He was giving Sao, he was giving Sao a lot of trouble and it eventually paid off. Yeah. You know, the ball came across, you know, Carlton Brown won the header, you know, it managed to get, get back out to, um, to the player they call, they call Nosey yeah. and he managed to, to crack it and convert him, putting Mona up one. And then after that, a ball came across again and Bayern should have done better with it, but the constant pressure by Carlton Brown managing to get around um, he got the ball up, it bubbled up onto his hand, penalty. Zane Pinnock, immaculate finish. He was absolutely confident, he was sure of himself and he, did, he made no mistake about it. And just like that, it was 2-2 bro. And then we saw Mona keep on applying the pressure, keep on applying the pressure, chance after chance, not managing to convert and on the counter-attack, bang, bang, bang. Three goals in relatively quick succession. Um, one by two goals, two goals in relatively quick succession, one by Dijon Richards. To, to seal his hat trick and to close off the game. You know, Mona tried and they tried. They got dead balls after dead, dead balls. They put the ball in the box, but they could not manage to break the deadlock. In the latter part, you know, their goalkeeper, Tajay Lee, he made an outstanding save to keep them in the game. And at the end of the day, the final score was 4 2. There we go. Bro, a while ago, you spoke about um, the way Mona played yeah. and how Kingston College played. Now, I can tell you, a football game, there are two teams playing the game. And Mona had a lot of the possession. And I was watching the game and I'm saying, all right, the Kingston College midfield needs to do better. But then we spoke to the coach after the game and he said it was totally deliberate. You know, we gave them the ball. We didn't try to play the ball out. We didn't try to, you know, play that possession game that we can play. You know, what we tried to do was hit them on the counter attack. You know, it worked for the, in, at the beginning part of the game and then Mona adjusted to it and they struggled towards the latter part of the first half coming out in the second half they struggled again then what the coach said to us off the air he changed the formation he kept tinkering with it until he found something and Dujan Richards you know he got away a couple of times and it didn't quite come together but then as you said bang one goal bang another goal you know from the right their right winger so bro 
I can tell that this was a tactical game and I enjoyed it. It was a real, it was a fun game. Um, the two coaches did well. I must say, a tactical masterclass from Craig Butler. We were saying at some point he was he was going to win this game the way his team was playing. But I cannot, you know, finish this this analysis and and, men, and not mention you know Coach Raymond Watson of Kingston College because it was a masterclass from him also. You know, we we spoke up the air and we said that yo. A lot of people said that what the, the better team can lose on the day. You know, we were trying to make sense of it because, you know, I come out to play something, you come out to play something. Yeah. I do what I want to do better than you want to do what you want to do. Better than, than you, you do, do what, what you want yeah. to do. You know, whether what you want to do looks better than what I want to do has nothing to do with me. I won the game, I took my chances, you didn't. I created more chances, you didn't. So I must say, Kingston College deserved to win this game. They took their chances well. They have the best player in the Manning Cup and it showed today. Bro, the same. Chess and not checkers mm -hmm. was completely apl applicable in today's game. You know, I think today's game not only was it the most entertaining and interesting game in the Manning Cup thus far, but it was one of the best coached games by both sides. You know, more on the Kingston College point since as that's the team that we're analyzing right now. Dijon Richard is such a good player on the counter attack. He's tall, he's strong, he's pacey, and he's very skilled. So he and he's very clinical. So when getting chances, he will convert more often than not. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we saw. And because Coach Watson knew exactly what he had in the John Richards and the caliber of defenders that he possessed, he attempted to play exactly that game. I think he understood that player for player, he might have been outmatched, but he definitely knew his strengths and I think he played to that strength. You know, some, some notable... Um, some notable underperformers, you know, we saw Samuel Shakes, who have been an absolutely outstanding player all game. You know, but because, deliberately so, Raymond Watson, you know, he, he overplayed the midfield, he outplayed the midfield and played from the defenders yeah, the to the attack. Just didn't look the Samuel player. Shakes just did not look as good as he was. You know, Blaine Byam, he, he started the game very good, you know, but he said that he was having some respiratory problems throughout the um, end of the first half and into the second half and he attributes that to his mistake you know um, but I think it was more attributed to Carlton Brown just being an absolute menace so that's kind of the, the, the breakdown of the Kingston College game they didn't necessarily do very much you know they were possessed and some would say outclassed talent wise but they got the ball into the spots that they wanted to get the ball into when they wanted to get the ball there and they managed to convert four of their opportunities and that's how they end up winning the game. Yeah, one more mark to put on under Coach Watson's yeah. belt. You know, coming into this, this game without four starters. Mm -hmm. You know, their their star man last game. You know, Mattis. Yeah. He he was absent today. Tasha and Mattis. Um, he wasn't playing today. He was struggling with an injury. You know, two more um three more of their starters was were, were not there. A midfielder, their winger, and their number nine. He was just not. They were not there today. And, you know, the coach played a bench player, the number six, in 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 his position. He had to play. Saul was struggling with a toe injury. Yeah. You know, so. I must give some credit to Coach Raymond Watson, but on the Mona side of things, yeah. um, we saw where it's so hard to analyze a Craig Butler team because sometimes you look at most teams where um, use four defenders, you know, some teams use three and then they use um, wide wing backs. But I can't quite tell his defensive system. You know, he said that he, he was he start, started the game with two defenders, and but I could see three. I saw three defenders and then they had a lot of attacking rotations. And the one area that again I'm going to say it in this analysis, bro, where I think Mona could do better. I feel like he, if they had a, 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 a more skilled forward i'm not even going to say number nine because you you know you educated me you know the other day that most teams just don't use a number nine anymore you know if they had a more skilled forward or a center forward bro i think this mona team would be unbeatable because we look at the, the positions that carlton brown got in we look at his touches yes he's a menace but you know the tactical aspect and the positional aspect of his game is not quite there because he's not a natural number you know, he's not a natural that forward he did get a goal that he should have scored there we go and, and champion right so imagine if they had a, a better attacker to play in that position bro if they had say a two um, um, two Zane Pinox, you know, this Mona team would look totally different. If they had two um, Daniel Mitchells, this team would look totally different because they, because they could whip in crosses and you would get another of them. So um, this Mona team, again, well coached. They made some um, in-game decisions, putting Carlton Brown up there. You know, um, they're number 10. You're going, I'm going to leave, leave it for you to speak about him, but his technical ability to create chances, bro, it was just special. So I must give some credit to the technical staff of Mona High School today. To your point, um, Roshan, you know, every team has their Achilles heel. You know, there's no absolute perfect team. You know, the closest team we've probably seen to an absolute perfect team is that Barca team with yeah. Messi and Suarez yeah. and Neymar and Iniesta and Xavi and no Busquets. That, that, that's as close as we've seen. You know, we haven't seen anything like that. And it's the same here with this Mona team. Though I think player for player, they are the most talented team in this Manning Cup. They do have a few deficits. And I think that's what cost them today, as you said. You know, they're lacking of an absolute number nine, you know, who is technically gifted, who has the ability to score goals. You know, I think had they had that, they would have, have feared better. However, 
some points to note. You know, on the Kingston College side, we spoke about um, Dijon Richards, absolutely outstanding there, man of the match. On the Mona side, Denzel Washington, Mackenzie is his last name, I yeah. think. He's the, and I will say it, most technically gifted player that I've seen in the Manning Cup thus far. And today he was absolutely on full show, absolutely on display today. His touches were supreme, his passes were well-weighted and sublime. His decision-making was so, was so, so genius-like. You know, he's a savant of football who was gifted with the technical ability to back it up. And because of that, he really, really bossed the midfield today. And he put his players, his wingers and his forwards into good positions. Unfortunately, they just weren't able to convert. In addition yeah. to the fact that he rattled the crossbar, you know, he's just such a good player and I can't get... I can't get enough of Denzel Washington. Yeah, he was really good today. One thing we must talk about. Yeah. You know, we went to Mona High School. People go and what, go and check out our, our our team features on the Manning Cup teams. You know, we went to Mona High School before the season started, yeah. bro. And we talked. We spoke to the coach, and he mentioned to us that hey. We have a formation where we can use six forwards. It's called a domino six. We have a domino five where we use no defender, or we use yeah. one defender, or two defenders, or three defenders. And I said to him, Coach, when you meet those better teams in the in the finals, if you're going to use two defender, that automatically tells us that you're going to leave space for pacey wingers. You know, you will not be facing the high dells. You will not be facing, you know, the camper downs. Who's a good team? You will not be facing the papines or even the Woolmers that that doesn't have a, a big goal threat. Yeah. You're going to be facing Kingston College. You're going to be facing Dujan Richards. You're going to be facing, be, be, be Macon, facing Aldridge. Macon Aldridge. You know, those are the players that we're talking about. And, and when Satchel. You, Satchel from Stats. And um, when you come up against those players, can you afford to outscore Kingston College? Because Whisper is going to take three of his five chances, yeah. as, he, as he did today. Are you going to outscore them if, you're, if you have to play um, Daniel Mitchell in the defense? And we saw today King, um, Mona High School lost that battle because they gave up the space. And what did Whisper do? He did his best and he took those chances. Three of his, his five or six chances today, bro. I think Mona, that's some that's some cause for concern for Mona High School. Yeah, yeah. As I said, as I said, bro, I, I really do think they will adjust. You know, they gave away two penalties that um some would say one of them was questionable. So that's something to look into. Yeah. Um Denzel Washington Mackenzie also converted on a goal that was offside that that looked very close, you yeah. know. So there's a lot of points that we could take from this game today. You know, um, I don't think the full story is told no. and there's a strong possibility bro that these two teams may well see each other in the finals that, again. That true. What are your thoughts on that? I actually think these two teams will see each other in the finals again. I think it will be a cracker. I think it will be one of the best Manning Cup um, final games definitely in the last five or six years. You know we saw some games between Kingston College and Jamaica College going to penalties. I think you know another Kingston College versus Mona game would produce something like this again. Imagine over, the, over there in the stadium, you know imagine under the lights. You know, I think it would be a great game, and that's the one I want to see. Yeah. Obviously, coming into this Manning Cup season, I had Mona to win the, 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 the Manning Cup because of their individual talent. But this Kingston College team is well coached, and it's a unit. This is truly a team. They fight like no other. They have some grit, bro. So, let's see how that plays out. But even before we attempt to get ahead of ourselves, bro, Jamaica College, they have looked outstanding. And St. Andrew Technical, though not necessarily one of the favourites, they are well coached and they have talented players in very key positions that can pose a threat. So I won't definitively say that this will be... This, I, won't, I won't definitively say that this is a dress rehearsal for the finals because it may well not be the case. But if this is the finals, bro, it will be an interesting one. It will be a cracker. Well, people, there you have it. Another post-match analysis from today's Manning Cup quarter-final game between Mona High School and Kingston College. Kingston College taking it on the day, winning 4-2. People, let us know your thoughts in the comment section. How do you feel about today's game? I hope you guys watched it. And if you like this video, this breakdown, please like the video. Leave a comment under this one and subscribe to this or that sports TV. One more thing, share the video to at least 10 people, but ensure to get us six subscribers because if each and every one of you guys can do that, you know how many subscribers that will get us by the end of the day? For now, people, leaving the stadium is filled. This was this or that sports TV. And we're out.